continue to worship the Lord together, but in another fashion. We've lifted up our voices. we lifted up our hearts. Now it's time to give unto Him as He has richly blessed us. Lighthouse Ministries has entered into the age of digital giving, which means no matter where we are, no matter what time it is, we can still give to our house of God. We've signed up with Givelify to make this process as easy as we can possibly do it. On the screen here is the website to go to to give that way you can download the app from either the google or apple stores and uh, be able to search out givelify download install the app and then search us out by using the phone number and uh, that's on the screen as well and then it'll show up as our legal name united pentecostal church inc of dayton and there'll be a picture of pastor deaton offer there as well as the church and if you're not comfortable with giving online that's fine too. There's an address that you can mail your offering to as well. The scripture still says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. With the same measure that you meet where with all, it shall be measured to you again. In other words, if you do your part, God will do his part. You cannot outgive God. So let's give to God together today. And now that we've worshipped the Lord together, let us continue to get excited about the next part of the service here. Let's get ready to receive the word with gladness. Let's magnify the Lord. Let's open our hearts as the man of God opens the scriptures up to us together. Say, God bless, Pastor Dietenhofer. For our God is a consuming fire. We want to welcome you to Lighthouse Ministries here again today on this wonderful Sunday morning. You have a 210 Poplar Street here in Bellevue, Kentucky. Uh, before we get started this morning, I want to take just a moment of time to say thank you uh, to all of our nursing staffs and hospital staffs out there that are uh, working so diligently uh, through this coronavirus time frame and uh, also our first responders out there. I just kind of want to mention how much we appreciate the things that you are doing uh, and helping each and every one of us putting yourselves on the front lines. We certainly appreciate it. We just want to say thank you. Uh, we want to go before the Lord this morning in a word of prayer. Uh, before we do that, then we're going to go ahead and, and, and read some scriptures here today and uh, uh, go over a uh, message here this morning. Uh, look forward to seeing you all again, hopefully real soon. Amen. I know we're, uh, things seem to be hopefully winding down a little bit more, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll get together back again soon. We're going to read out of the book of Revelation today, chapter 9, uh, beginning at verse 3. Uh, I'm going to read Revelation chapter 9, verse 3. Verse 5 and verse 10. I'm going to skip around a little bit. As the Bible says, line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. And also I'm going to read out of the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 20 and 21. So if you're at home, if you want to write that down here this morning before I start. Uh, I know it's not always that easy to do. Uh, so you can take some notes if you'd like. Uh, once again, Revelation chapter 9, verse 3. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. In verse 5, it says, Unto them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented for five months, and that their torment was as a torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. In verse 10, it says, And they had ta uh, tails like the two scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Uh, verse, uh, Deuteronomy verse 7, verse 20 and 21 it says, Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them until they that are left and hide themselves from thee be destroyed. Uh, thou shalt not be affrighted at them, for the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. I want to preach this morning on just a simple subject here today about the tale of the tale. Uh, why don't we uh, bow our heads in a word of prayer here today? Let's ask God's help here today. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you, and we give you all the praise and blessing and glory and honor for another day today. We thank you for the breath of life again this day. Lord, we thank you for those that have been working so diligently on the front lines in this time of this COVID-19 virus. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for keeping your hand upon each and every one of us, Lord God, and how, Lord, that they're uh, being able to flatten this curve somewhat here, Lord God, and uh, not as much devastation is taking place as they once thought. Lord, we just thank you for it right now. Lord, we ask now, Lord God, for your help here today. Help for the hurting that's out here this morning, Lord God. Those that are stuck, Lord God, in situations, Lord God, where they don't feel like there's any way of getting out, Lord God. We know, Lord God, you'll make a way of escape for them today. 
Lord, we're praying today, Lord God, for your divine hand here upon the message, upon the word of God here today. Use this vessel here today, Lord God. Let me be a clay in your potter's hands today. Use me as you will, Lord God, we pray. Lord, let the hearer of God be anointed to receive it and be anointed to give it today. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I read for you today on the book of Revelation. Amen. In James 1, 14 and 15 it says this, But every man is tempted, and when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed, then when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Amen. So the very start, amen, of death begins when we begin to lust after something. Even through the temptation, when we give in to a temptation. Uh, you know, we read about the, the book of Revelation about the scorpion. Actually about the locust. But it was really talking about it was given power like a scorpion. And that's kind of what I want to uh, talk more about here today is the power of that scorpion that it talked about. Amen. That was given to it. Uh, scorpions, of course, are noted for three things. One, that they have... Pinchers uh, in front of them, two pinchers on the front of them, and uh, they live in dry places, tending to be under rocks, and where you will find scorpions in the uh, in desert places. You tend to find them more often, and uh, we have them in the United States. We have them in Oklahoma, and Arizona, and very arid, dry areas. Um, and also that there is a stinger that is in their tail. Uh, you see, the front end of the scorpion is is usually dangerous, but Normally not deadly. It's more there to grab and to hold its prey. Amen. Not to destroy it. Not to say it cannot cut something in half with him. Amen. But the reality of it is that their design is there to hold you and keep you bound. Amen. So that the tail might put its final sting in you. Amen. Because it's a tail end of the scorpion that is considered deadly. Amen. Uh, but you know that's kind of how the devil likes to work. Amen. He, he works as the power of the scorpion. Amen. In the beginning, he will use his pinchers on you. Amen. The Apostle Paul will talk about this in Romans chapter 8, verse 2, called the law of sin and death. Amen. When we sin, amen, it holds us and it binds us. Amen. This law of sin and this law of death, amen, it holds us and it binds us. Amen. It keeps us until finally that stinger is placed into us. You know, the sin that we do, you know, there's a lot of sin out there. And, uh, some will argue with what is considered a sin and what's not considered a sin. But I, I would say this, amen, if uh, the first time you ever drank a beer, amen, and it caught you in his pinch, amen, you never thought the result would be that someday you might get cirrhosis of the liver or, amen, or even liver cancer or something like that. Or the first time you ever began to smoke a cigarette, amen, and you never know the end result of that cigarette would be lung cancer. Even the first time you made a, a glance of attention at some, someone that was not your significant other, even someone that was not your wife, even, or your girlfriend, or whatever you want to call it, even, and all of a sudden you never knew it would turn into adultery, or a broken marriage, or a broken relationship, something that was headed toward marriage, and now all of a sudden, even, it's not there anymore. Uh, sometimes you don't realize what... You didn't realize that that sexual immorality, amen, that you got yourself into will bring you an STD, amen. Or maybe a drug addiction that grabs you, amen, would lead to an overdose, uh, amen. Or even something simple as spending too much time in the sun, worshiping the sun, if you will, amen, would ever lead to skin cancer. You know, the list tends to go on and on and on. We could do this all day, amen. But, you see, the stinger's not in the beginning. It's in the tail end. It really is the tale of the tale that I want to talk to you about here this morning. Amen. You might feel the pinch at the beginning. You knew it was wrong, but you didn't get caught doing it, so you kept on doing it. Amen. But when you did get caught, amen, you just didn't realize you were being caught. Amen. The enemy grabbed those pinchers around you. I mean, grabbed hold of you tight. Amen. Some of you, before you ever came to God, know what I'm talking about. You couldn't quit some of the things that you've been trying to do before, amen, that you had done before. You couldn't quit smoking. You couldn't quit drinking, amen. You couldn't quit doing drugs, amen. You couldn't even quit cussing for crying out loud, amen. And, and many other things, amen, that you have done. There's so many things that you can list because we're drawn away, the Bible said, after our own lusts, amen. How many times did you try to quit, amen, but you couldn't quit, amen? How many times did you try to stop, but you were not able to stop? How many times did you want to just 
finish what you were doing, but you just couldn't seem to get off of whatever that you got yourself on. It was like a merry-go-round that would go round and round and round. Because the devil wants to finish you off. Amen. He wants to grab you with his pinchers and drop a deadly stinger into you. He wants to finish you off. Amen. And put a stinger into you. Amen. That you cannot get away from. So he can put you in a grave somewhere. You see, scorpions, they hide under rocks. Amen. You see, it's not even, uh, it, not even immune from scorpions in the religious world. Jesus in Scripture is called the rock. Amen. He is called the rock of our salvation. But there are false prophets out there that will call themselves Christians but are nothing more than scorpions. Amen. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 1 says it this way. In that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. And say, we should not eat our own bread. Amen. And we shall eat, I'm sorry, our own bread. And wear our own apparel. Only take not away our name that we are not a reproach. Take, don't take your name away from us that we are not a reproach. In other words, even uh, seven usually represents the number for a church. Especially when you're talking about a woman. Amen. Because we are considered the bride of Christ. The scripture would tell us. Amen. And Jesus is that one man that we are taking hold of. So we should not eat of our own bread. Amen. We shall eat our own bread. In other words, we want our own doctrine. Amen. We, we don't care what the Word says. Amen. We want our own doctrine. We want to say it the way we want to say it. Amen. And not the way God says it. Amen. We want to come up with our own opinions of what the Word says. Amen. And we want to have our own doctrine. And we want to, we want to wear our own apparel. Amen. In other words, we want to wear what we want to wear. Amen. Don't you judge me, preacher. Don't judge what I do. Don't judge anything. Amen. Because I'm here to tell you today, I am not your judge. Amen. Only God is the judge here today. Praise God. Amen. But the Word of God does judge us. Amen. It's the Word of God that will be our judge someday. Amen. Because the Word of God will be the final word. Praise the Lamb of God. Amen. He said, only take not our way that we and take not your name away from us that we are not considered a reproach. In other words, let us be called uh, under the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. But uh, that we don't be a reproach. Amen. In other words, uh, we can live under the name of Christianity. We can live under the name, amen, of being a godly church, even though within our own hearts, amen, we know we are not. Amen. You see, the scorpion is a creature that will manifest itself, the Bible says, in these last days. We live in the world, even though it's full of the scorpion. Because we see the result of sin that's all around us. We see sin manifest itself from start to finish every day in the news. In our schools, on our job, and even in our own homes. There's not one of us here that's not had a water cooler discussion about stuff we've seen in schools that we've never seen before. How many times we sat around the water cooler, amen, and, and talked about some of the things that are happening in our world that we've never heard of before? How many times have we just discussed with one another stuff that just seems like a laundry list of things you've never heard about 20 years ago, 30 years ago, even 40 years ago? Amen. But now it seems like we're facing all of it all the time, whether it be in our news, amen, whether it be in our schools or on our jobs or even in our own homes. You see, the scorpion has a tail with three knotted-like sections that are in it. You know, Jesus said this about the devil. He said, there's three things about him you better learn right away. He said, the thief come up but to kill, or steal, to kill, and destroy. Those three knotted sections of that tail is that he's come to steal, he's come to kill, and he's come to destroy. You know, it may look hopeless sometimes, even when that enemy comes into your life. Praise God. Amen. It may look hopeless because he's going to try to take things from you. Amen. He's going to try to steal things from you. Amen. He, he don't, he's not content with just stealing things from you. He wants to see you dead. He wants to destroy your reputation. He wants to destroy your name. He wants to destroy your family name. He wants to take away things uh, amen, from you and literally devastate your whole world. Because that's how the enemy likes to work uh, in your life. But thank God he's got a remedy God does. Uh, thank God Jesus came. Amen. Thank God, Jesus is our remedy to anything the devil huh, brings in our direction or brings in our way. Amen. You're never really trapped when you got Jesus. You're never really fully held uh, in the scorpion's hands, amen, or the scorpion's claws when you got Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus has a way, uh, amen, of breaking the bonds of the enemy. Jesus has a way, amen, of ripping open the claws. Uh, Jesus has a way, amen, uh, of keeping the power of that tail, amen, away from you. Amen. 
Never hopeless when you're around Jesus Christ because he is our blessed hope. Matter of fact, the word for scorpion in the Hebrew is akrab. Amen. Akrab. It means to scourge. Amen. With a knotted whip. That's really what the name means. Something with a knotted whip. You know, Jesus, before he went to Calvary, had his backside beaten. The Bible says, amen, with a cat of nine tails, or what was called a scourge. He was scourged. Amen. He literally had a scorpion's tail, as you want to call it, amen, whipped on him. He bore the stripes of the scorpion. Amen. I know it was a man doing the whipping. Don't get me wrong. And I know it was a man that was tearing the flesh of his back. Amen. But in the spirit, it was much more than that. Amen. It was a scorpion giving Jesus the full weight of punishment. Amen. For sin. Amen. Not his sin, but our sin. Amen. He literally became sin for us. Amen. Pray God that he would bear for us. Each time the scorpion laced open his backside, yet it would be those very same stripes that we could later declare our remedy for the sting of the whip of the scorpion's tail. In Isaiah 53 and 5, he said, By his stripes we are healed. Amen. Jesus bore the stripes for you and for me. Amen. That we do not have to take of the stinger of, of, of the scorpion because Jesus Christ himself bore it for us. Amen. With a cat and nine tail that whipped his backside open. Amen. He felt the pressure and the pain of the scorpion sting. Amen. But he took it for us. And because he took it for us, we do not have to receive it. Amen. When we receive him. Praise God. It doesn't matter when the scorpion grabbed you. It doesn't matter if he has already dropped his stinger into your life. It doesn't matter even what part of this life. Amen. As long as you're breathing, you've got an opportunity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As long as you're breathing, you've got a chance with him. Amen. As long as you're breathing, amen, uh, he's going to be with you to help you. Amen. You see, for the word for scorpion in Greek is scorpios, which means to pierce something. Literally to pierce it. Uh, you see, when Jesus went to Calvary, after he put the scorpions whipped to the back, then they led him to Calvary with the stinger of the sin, amen, pierced his hands and his feet, amen, with the scorpion's tail finally pierced his side. But the Bible said, oh, there came out blood and water, literally. Even the Bible says in Leviticus that the life of the flesh is in the blood. Literally, living water came from his side, amen. Praise God. The full weight of the scorpion's den was unleashed on Jesus for our sins. Even the crown of thorns that was planted upon his head. Amen. Which thorns and thistles grow in the dry places of the desert. Amen. There he was there. The scorpion reigned in the dry places. It was in the dry places. Amen. That the scorpions lived. And the scorpions reigned and ruled. Even Jesus said this is your hour. Amen. He even told them it was their time. Amen. But their time also was coming. Amen. He said this is your hour. And your hour of darkness. This is your time. This is your opportunity. This is your chance. Amen. But I'm telling you he knew something too. Amen. He endured the shame of the cross. Amen. He despised the shame. Actually, the scripture says he endured the cross, despised the shame. Amen. For the joy that was set before him. Amen. No wonder Jesus said this from Calvary. I thirst. He was in a dry place. Amen. And he began to thirst. You know, the world thought it had won. The scorpion hissed in triumph that day. Amen. When he said, it is finished. But you see, the stinger is in the tail. Amen. And that's the tail of the tail. Amen. Because it wasn't just the devil has a tail. Amen. God's people have a tail also. There was another stinger that was going to be unleashed. Another tail of a tail that was going to be unleashed. But not by the scorpion. Amen. We read about this in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 20 and 21. Instead, amen, but by the hornet, amen, that God was going to send. Amen. God said he would drive out the Israelites' enemies. With the hornets. You see the hornet stinger. Is in its tail. The hornet hard, is harmless from the front. Amen. The only thing it does is spread the pollen of the gospel. From one flower 
to the next flower. Amen. The only thing a hornet can do, amen, is to take the pollen, amen, from one flower, amen, and bring it to another flower. In other words, it pollinates, amen. It does its job, amen, to try to grow the things in the kingdom of God. That is the power of a bee. Praise God. <coughs> Excuse me. The hornet is harmless for that front. But in the end, amen, a hornet has got a very powerful stinger, amen, a very powerful stinger. You know, the church has been a veiled mystery. Amen. But God is going to unleash his church for a mighty end time revival. Amen. God is going to be part of some things here in this church. Amen. That's going to be wondrous in the eyes of man. Amen. Because God is going to do a great work. And he's going to do a quick work. If you want to be a part of what he's trying to do. Amen. Because a scorpion isn't the only thing that's made manifest in the end time. Uh -uh. Not the only thing. The church will be also unveiled in the end. When a stinger is ready to drive away the scorpions. Amen. Because God's always got a remedy for sin. God's always got a better plan. He's always got a better way. Amen. God's always got hope when there is hopelessness. He's always got help when there is helplessness. He's always got a plan. You know, I was thankful for Noah's Ark. But I think I like Noah's architect a whole lot more. I'm thankful for what God wants to do. Amen. In this last hour. In this last day. If you want allow him to work through you. Amen. I promise you God's got something for you. Amen. To let you know that you can bring a message of hope to somebody out there. Amen. Let them know that there is a God that loves them. That there is a God that cares about them. That there is a God that will bless them and help them and strengthen them and allow them amen, to do great things in the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. You see we have a stinger of revival in our tail. Amen. It's called the end time revival. Amen. Because Jesus gave us something powerful. Don't you remember this scripture in Luke chapter 10, verse 17 through 19? He said, The 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. He said, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power, not some of the power, but all the power of the enemy, amen? And nothing by any means shall hurt you, amen? In Acts 1 and 8, amen, he told the disciples, amen, praise God to tarry there, he said, because you shall receive power, he said, after the Holy Ghost was come upon you, amen? In other words, they were going to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2, praise God. Disciples, he said, we're going to tread on serpents and scorpions. You know what? He gave them this message before they even received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. They could just do it by the authority of the name of Jesus. You know, the authority of the name of Jesus itself will tread upon scorpions. Amen. Praise God. But when you've got his power behind you, amen. When you've got his authority behind you, praise God. You can tread on scorpions. Amen. Praise God. I'm not talking about literal scorpions that you might want to go and step on. Amen. I'm talking about spiritual scorpions that's got power in your tail. Amen. To destroy your life. Amen. It's no wonder the hell unleashed all this fury on Jesus. No wonder they whipped him and brutally beat him and pierced him. They remember when he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. And when it was their hour, they unleashed their fury upon him. Praise God. But thank God, amen, he got up, amen. Thank God he rose from the grave. Thank God he is risen, amen. Thank God, amen, Hell didn't know what, that Jesus could rise again. They thought they had him down. They thought they were done with him, amen, but no, no. He rose again. Praise the Lamb of God. That's why in 1 Corinthians it says, Oh, death, amen, where is thy sting? In grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which gives us victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just victory, but final victory, amen? Praise God. Praise God. You see, the scorpion is a land dweller. It dwells upon the land. But the bee is an air dweller, Amen? Someday, someday we're going to fly away, praise God. Someday we are going to fly away. I know we like to sing that old gospel song, amen. I'll fly away, praise God. Yeah. But you know, uh, someday we're going to take flight, praise God, with Him. You know, you were not meant to be land brothers, amen. You were meant for something greater, amen. He's going to have power over things, praise God. Praise God. He's going to take you out of here, amen. Praise God. He's going to take you from the grave to eternity with Him. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, the word is also called the bee. And the bee gets its name from the child he named Dabar. Amen. From where we get the name Deborah from. Uh, it's a compliment in the Greek is the word is in its complement in the Greek is the word logos. Now that might sound familiar to you. Amen. Because John 1 says that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The Greek word for word is logos. Amen. The sting of the hornet through the word was in the beginning plan of God. Amen. That word word comes from how the bees are born. Amen. Amen. Some of from their mouth. Jesus will give the final word to the devil. The final sting will come from Jesus when he gives the death sentence to the devil and has him thrown into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. God has provided us, amen, the victory. Already, amen, has a sting of sin enveloped you. Amen. Praise God. Maybe the tail of the scorpion has not yet pierced you, but if you feel like he's grabbed you with his pinchers, I've got some good news for you here today. Amen. I got some good news for you if you feel like, you know, uh, I didn't know it was going to take me as far as it took me. You know, sin will take you further than you ever wanted to go. When sin grabs a hold of you, amen, it doesn't want to release you. It doesn't want to let you go. But God's always got a remedy for sin. He's got a plan for you. He knows the plans in his life. He knows his thoughts toward you. He's got thoughts of peace for you. God has a plan for your life. Hear me when I tell you today, God has got a plan just for you. Now sometimes we just don't believe that stuff. We say, God doesn't have a plan for me. I'm telling you, God has a plan for you. If you're listening to me here today, you hear me well. God has a plan for you. You may not have thought you were going to plan on listening here this morning, but here you are. It's by divine appointment that you're listening in today. Because God is calling you. Amen. He is calling you. Listen, sometimes, I don't care who you are here, anybody is capable of being caught in the pinchers. Amen of the scorpion. Anybody has the ability. Amen. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I don't make it a point to go run into the desert to find scorpions. I don't. I tend to try to stay away from them, all due respect. As most of you probably would. But you know, the Bible said we're drawn away after our own lusts. You know, the reason we get caught up in those pictures in the first place is because we're drawn away after something. In other words, something took us there. Something caused us to go there. Amen. Folks, I'm here to tell you today that God will help you if you will let him. God will help you if you'll let him. A lot of times, we don't let God do the work in our lives. A lot of times, we just, well... We try to do things on our own power and our own ability. The truth of the matter is, amen, I don't know how many times you out there have tried to break free from certain things. There was a time I was caught up in sin in such a way that I had a hard time breaking free from it too. Amen. But by the love of Jesus Christ, by the mercy and the goodness of God. Amen. I found a better way in Him. As some fellow said, amen, I used to drink Budweiser until I found me a buddy that was wiser. Amen. Praise God. I used to smoke tobacco, but now I wholly smoke tobacco. Amen. Why? Because I'll tell you something. Amen. There's something great in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's something powerful for you out there. I want you to know this here today. If you're hearing me today, if you're listening in today, it's because God is calling you. That's right. God is calling you. The Bible lets us know very clearly that you can't even come without His Spirit leading you. Amen. God's Spirit is leading you here today. Amen. To grab hold of those things for the kingdom of God. Amen. Don't let the devil put a stinger in you. Uh -uh. Why don't you put a stinger in him? Go preach the word of God. Go teach the word of God. Teach a Bible study. Amen. Tell somebody about the goodness of God. Spread the pollen around. Amen. About what God can do. How he can bring growth. Amen. Not devastation. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ loves each and every one of you here today. And as I'm talking to you today, I want you to hear me well. Please hear me. God cares about you. Sometimes we just don't believe that about ourselves. Sometimes we feel like we're just not lovable, that nobody cares about us. Listen, he cares for you. He cared enough to go to a cross to a place called Calvary. You know, Calvary is an amazing place. Amen. It's called the place of the skull, Golgotha. Simply means the place of the skull. 
You know, the biggest battleground we face is right here in our skull, right between our ears. It's the way we think about things. You know, the Bible also says the way a man thinks, so is he. And there's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the ways of men there are the ways of wickedness and death. That's why we need to use God's word and God's plan. Amen. Sometimes we make plans on our own and we think that we can do everything with a plan. I'm not against plans, don't get me wrong, but I'm here to tell you something here today. God's got a plan just designed for you. I hope you're listening to me here this morning when I tell you something. Amen. I don't want the tail of the wrong tail to be given over me. I want the tail of the right tail to be given over me. Amen. Listen, there's going to come a time, amen, when the Lord Jesus himself, amen, will ascend from the heavens with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. Amen. He's going to call them home. And listen, you, whoever you are here today, you can be a part of that. So I don't know how to break free from the stuff I'm in. Can I tell you something today? I don't have all the answers either, but Jesus does. He has a way of opening up doors that you thought were closed. He has a way of making a way where there seems not to be any way. And I promise you here today, amen, if you ever make a start for him, if you'll begin by repenting, you know, the Bible makes it very clear. We must repent. We must be water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins. And God will fill us with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We'll be evidenced of that by speaking in other tongues the Spirit of God giving the utterance. We learn that in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 38. Amen. If you'll make a start for him here today, we're going to go before the Lord in a word of prayer as we finish here today. As we pray, if you're bound by some things today, you have power over it. You just don't know it. You bet. We're going to help you pray today. And we're going to ask God to give you a start here today. We're going to ask God to say, you know, Lord, you've been helping to break free some things that are binding them. Help them to break through the power of the scorpion today. Amen. Would you please bow your head with me today as we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you have gone to Calvary for us. You've already taken the sting of death, oh God. You've already taken the sting of the scorpion, oh God. And you've come out, oh God, alive and well. Lord, we know, Lord God, that you have power over death, hell, and the grave. Lord, we know that you have power over all the power of the enemy, Lord God. Praise God. Lord, we ask right now, Lord God, that you would help somebody that's listening today. That's listening here, Lord God. Lord God, I'm asking right now that you would help them in their situation. Whatever means that may be binding them in this life of God, that they know that Jesus is a hindrance to their walk with you. Lord, I'm just praying now that you would go and you would help them. Lord, by the power of the word of God, by the power of the blood of Jesus. Lord, we pray over them now, Lord God. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that the enemy loose them and let them go right now. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over them right now, Lord God. Lord, that the authority of your word, Lord God, Lord God, of the power of your name right now, Lord Jesus. So, Lord God, we go forth right now. We speak a word into their life right now, Lord God, that you would heal them, Lord God. Heal them, Lord God, I pray, Lord Jesus, so, and help them here today. Heal their hearts and heal their spirits here today, Lord God. Not just heal the body, Lord God, but heal them every way home, Lord God. Lord, I pray right now that you move upon them, Lord God. In true repentance, we come before you here today asking that you would forgive us of our sins, Lord God. Forgive those that will sin against us, Lord God. Lord, we pray today now, Lord God, that you move upon them today. Lead them, guide them, direct them, order their speech and steps from the day forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me just take a few moments to say thank you for joining us here today. You can find us here at Lighthouse Ministries, 210 Poplar Street here in Bellevue, Kentucky. We want you to know that Jesus loves you and so do we. God bless you.